Gentlemen, welcome to the last segment of my Georgian adventures. In the previous episode, I finished at the wine region of Kaheti. Today, I'm taking you on the most exciting part of my journey. We are traveling to one of the most remote and unspoiled regions in Georgia and arguably in the world. It is located in the northeast part of the country and historically has been very challenging to travel to. It is known for its breathtaking landscapes, traditional culture and way of life. Okay, enough with the suspense already, we are going to Tusheti. So it's 6 in the morning and uh, yesterday I was lucky to find a person who will take me all the way uh, to Tusheti. I found this person uh, completely randomly in the small town of Tel Aviv, which is very good news for me because that saves time and I can leave uh, early in the morning. So he's going to be here in about uh, 15 minutes. It will take us around four to five hours, depending on the condition of the road to get there. But from what I've been hearing from locals, the place is spectacular. So I cannot wait uh, to show it to you guys. After a short drive from Tel Aviv, we took a turn onto the road leading to Tusheti. It is considered one of the most trickiest routes in the world. BBC at some point included it on their top 10 most dangerous roads list. It became very evident from the numerous memorial boards I saw along the way dedicated to people who fell off the cliff here and died. The road to Tusheti is a treacherous one with 70 kilometers of hairpin curves, steep drops and sharp turns. It is often blocked by snow and mudslides, as well as littered with rocks, making it extremely difficult and dangerous to navigate. On the flip side of the coin, it is an area of stunning natural beauty and home to some of the most breathtaking views I have ever seen. Ironically, this fact makes the road dangerous as well, as it is very easy to get distracted and lose your focus. The moral of the story, do not drive here by yourself. Hire a local experienced driver and enjoy the natural beauty along the way. This is uh, one of the most epic rides I've ever taken in my life. Uh, so far we've been driving for uh, about two and a half hours and the views are incredible. I can't wait uh, to see what, uh, what's waiting for me next. And what waited for me next simply took my breath away. Just stop at the top of the hill from now on we're just gonna go down uh, and from this point to shady stars you can see there is like a small church here the ride so far has been incredible i've never experienced anything like that i'm so happy that this is happening this is where to shady starts from now on we're just gonna go down and uh, in about an hour we should be 
at the spot. Midway through our journey, we stopped for a quick break. During the remaining part of the drive, I was very excited as the stunning landscapes of the Caucasus were offering the most unique and mesmerizing views. To be honest with you, I wanted to capture everything on camera, but then it would take about two days to get to my destination. However, I couldn't resist this beauty. Just to give you an idea, here's the road we are driving on to Tusheti, and here's what we saw out of our windows. Truly magical, wouldn't you say? After about 6 hour drive, we finally arrived to our destination. And here I would like to pause for a minute, take a moment and talk about my driver Goggy, as he represents a very important attribute of Georgia, its people. I can't stress enough how kind and hospitable Georgians are. Gogi took me to his family house, where I was fed delicious local food and introduced to his relatives. Something he didn't have to do, but something I will never forget. Okay, let's look at the map for a second. My goal in Tusheti is to cover three villages, Omalo, Bochorna and Dartlo. I will attempt to do this in four days here. With that said, let's hit the road. After delicious lunch and some rest at Gogi's family house, we headed towards my first destination. I'm heading towards a small village of Bochorna now, and it is a very special village. First of all, it's the highest settlement in Europe, and secondly, the population of this village is one. Yes, one. There's one doctor called Irakli, and he stays there on a permanent basis. You see it during winter months, the population of the village uh, goes down into the towns because it's too cold in here. But the doctor said if he leaves, the status of the highest settlement in Europe will be lost. So he decided to stay and been there for years now. Bochorna is a small rural village in Tusheti. It is situated in the Gometsari Gorge from where the views of the mighty Caucasus mountain ridge extend. The village is known for its traditional architecture with many houses made of wood and stone. All these houses, uh, starting the month of October, um, they just get empty because everyone moves back to the town and only uh, uh, one guy uh, stays in that house over there with the white roof. And although it is almost impossible to meet locals here, if you're lucky enough, you might be able to get acquainted with Bochorna's only resident, Dr. Irakli Hvedarulidze. Thanks to him, in 2014, the village won its status from another Georgian village, Ushguli, and became the highest settlement in Europe at 2,345 meters above sea level. So I found the uh, doctor's house, but unfortunately he's away and he's not gonna be back until end of week. So, fortunately I missed him. Uh, I really wanted to talk to him a little bit to get to know him and ask him what motivated him to stay here by himself. But, fortunately I wasn't able to, I tried. Uh, vie. In Bochorna, walking among ghosted buildings, it is very easy to feel at the edge of the world. Not alone, but free. And as an added bonus, knocking off a visit to the highest settlement in Europe felt extremely satisfying. Another place I wanted to share with you is a small village called Omalo. The settlement is conditionally divided into upper and lower part. So I'm staying in um, 
upper Omalo and uh, it's so secluded. Old Tushetian buildings look like house fortresses and have a very distinct architectural style. In the old days, Tushetian nomad tribes lived in the narrow towers. These fortifications were built and roofed of the flat stones. As you can see, this is built with no mortar in it. It's just solid rocks on top of each other. Incredible. Wow. Towers roofs are steeply sloped, sometimes with the shape of a pyramid. Tushetian house fortresses were four to six floors and designed to accommodate extended families. The top floor, Charklo, included bedrooms and watchtowers for men. The ground floor hosted cattle and was used as a working room for women. Individual families lived on the middle floor. So-called kara or a fireplace was arranged in the middle of the room, which divided the space into men's and women's. During my stay in Omalo, I've enjoyed exploring these historical sites, including the medieval fortress of Casalo. A walk among its ancient structures is highly recommended. And when the sun goes down, spend your evenings at the base of Upper Omalo, by the campfire, mingle with locals and embrace their culture and traditions. Good morning. Today I'm going to a village of Dartlo. I'm actually gonna hike for about 10 or 12 kilometers uh, through the mountains. Should be uh, a lot of fun. Uh, but I'm excited because this village, Dartlo, that I'm going to is uh, uh, very old and they still uh, keep uh, very old traditions uh, over there. So lots to see and uh, I'm excited. I'll report from there. See you. <laughs> So I've been hiking for about an hour and a half now and uh, I must say the views are spectacular. I'm so glad I started my day off uh, this beautiful hike. I have uh, probably another hour and a half or maybe two hours to get there but uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's a great way to start the day. There were a few reasons why I wanted to visit Dartlo. One of them is picturesque hike from Momalo through the mountains which allows you to fully appreciate the beauty of this region. Another one was to learn about some unique Tushetian traditions and customs and Dartlo has preserved some of this perfectly. <laughs> Finally here, it took me about three and a half hours to get here, I can't feel my legs, but this is totally worth it, this is so nice. Dartlo is probably the most photogenic village in Tusheti. Here you will find neatly built houses, narrow streets and carved terraces, white clouds of sheep in the meadows, the picturesque pastures with mountain river and plenty of waterfalls. The village itself is well-preserved collection of historical buildings with common to Tusheti defensive towers. It is located in the gorge of the Pirikita Alazani river at approximately 2000 meters above sea level. So there are a few things that needs to be said about uh, Dartlo and Tusheti in general. First of all, people uh, have adopted Christianity here, but they still value pagan traditions. For example, there are some places here in Dartlo that women are prohibited from entering. Uh, they don't eat pork here. And the most interesting fact, they actually still worship the God of Sun here. Every year for three to five days, they sacrifice um, either sheep or goat. And it's an um, event that's uh, very popular. Uh, the whole village uh, gets together and uh, they have the whole ritual to do that. I literally missed it by two weeks, which sucks, but it is extremely fascinating to find a spot like that in the middle of Caucasian mountains, completely secluded, and uh, to find that they still do stuff like that in 21st century. Just wow.
In the center of the village, next to the church, there are remains of ancient Christian temples. Directly in front of them, here's the sign that indicates that women are not allowed to access the shrine. As wild as it sounds today, I'd strongly encourage respecting local traditions and being attentive to warning signs, as locals take it very personally. And not far away, in a small semicircle, there are 12 odd stones that look like chairs. So this is called Sapchao, which is an old school courthouse. Uh, if you can see, there is 12 rocks around. And uh, back in the day, the elderly from the village would sit down here and discuss any litigation matters on this spot right here. Uh, it dates back to 16th, 17th century and it is still perfectly preserved here. Across the creek, an ancient cemetery can be found. I wouldn't have noticed it if it wasn't for these two houses, which initially were supposed to be mausoleums, but locals ended up using them as quarantine facility for villagers who were sick. There's another thing that's worth mentioning. There is absolutely no electricity here, and I've seen only a few houses with the solar panels, but what's actually cool is that when it gets dark, the whole village is just covered in blackness. There's nothing going on. I saw like few candles in few houses and that's it. I guess uh, that's a cool part, being just excluded from my external world and just live a simple life. People do it. I mean, it's possible. Pretty cool. I must admit, Dartlo was the prettiest village I've seen in Tusheti. I enjoyed walking through its narrow streets that at times reminded tunnels made of stone and of course wooden houses with their carved terraces. I loved learning about the ancient Tushetian customs and traditions here. But there was one more thing that I wanted to do here. When I first arrived to Dartlo, I noticed a small settlement above it. It was an abandoned village of Kvavlo. I thought if I could just go up there, the views of Dartlo and its surroundings must be spectacular. And so I decided to go on a two-hour hike to experience it firsthand. There's another village right on top of Dirlo called Kvalo. And uh, I'm hiking there right now again. It's another like five kilometer hike. Uh, but I thought I might as well. I, uh, I didn't read about it anywhere. I just saw it on top of the hill and I figured I might as well go see what it's, uh, what it's all about. Kvalo, the village that I'm going to right now. Uh, you can only walk in there. Sorry, I'm losing my breath. From the hills of Kvavlo, the beauty of Tusheti took on the whole new meaning the land of stunning landscapes and breathtaking views. Visiting Tusheti was one in a lifetime experience that will be extremely hard to forget. It provided an opportunity to truly appreciate our planet and reflect on life. And for that, I am eternally grateful. Unfortunately, my time at this beautiful place called Tusheti has come to its end. I hope I was able to transfer at least a little bit of its beauty from here into your screens. I know it would always live in my memory and in my heart. For now, Madloba Tusheti, Madloba Sakartvalo, thank you, Georgia. Stay adventurous, stay safe, and stay loved. I'll see you in the next country.